So in this section, we're going to cover how to use the still store to not only import graphics, use the graphics, but also how to make animated transitions with uh, PNG or Targa sequences. All right. So to get started, we can either transfer in from the network, or if I have them loaded in the root of the USB, I can simply plug in my USB drive, wait for it to mount, and we can go into the still store. And now our still store menu comes up with our channels. And if I go into select and manage, right, I can now go ahead and copy from USB. So when we copy from USB, it searches the, the root and it'll start copying all of the files from the root that are PNG, Targa, bitmap, JPEG, all those format types will be copied from the USB into the switcher's hard drive and kept there permanently. So you can then remove the USB and you'll always have the files. You can also move files within the, the file system if you want to create directories and move things away. But it'll copy it from there to a folder called USB. So as it's finishing, we will uh, we'll go ahead and start looking at the still store. So it has completed. And now when we look in um, our parent directory, we have our USB directory. And inside of here is where it'll locate all of those, those files. So now it's populated them from that USB. So I had a couple of still images as well as I had uh, two animated sequences. So the animated sequences will show up as a single entry and it'll nice, it shows us a key channel to show me that there's video and alpha and it shows me a little movie file letting me know it's a sequence of clips and I can see that it's 30 frames in total. So the way the still store works is there are multiple channels. If I load this onto channel one, I can double tap to load it and now it begins loading. And you can see here channel one and channel two have been linked together. So channel one, the video will load to channel one and the alpha is going to load into channel two. And it takes about a second to, uh, to load each frame. Uh, also with still files like this big sky, so I load that into, into channel three. And if I select channel three, it will load that as soon as these finish, it will automatically load into channel three for me. Okay, so how do we use these now with custom controls and even memories? So with a memory, when we were storing and recalling them from the, the storing and recalling of memories, you'll remember that there is the attributes section. So in the attributes section, if I enable the channels before storing the memory, those channels on the memory recall will recall whatever still or animation was in that channel when the memory was stored. If I deselect them, what this will do is it will make sure that nothing is, is going to be changed when that memory is recalled. That way whatever was there it will leave alone. So when I go and I look at my animation, so it's still loading, which is great. All right. So now, if what I wanted to do was perform an animated wipe, we're going to use the similar steps as we did with the external video server, only we're going to use the internal still store instead. So just like I did the vision wipe, we're going to do a different transition here. So we're going to start off and say custom control, and I'm going to pick my custom control, maybe I'll modify the name, and Maybe this is, oh, I want to capitalize it, Jersey, wipe. So that will uh, allow me to, and we'll just click back, and that way when I look at my name, it looks nice, and away we go. So we take that and we start recording. So I'm going to be using similar steps in that I'm going to say, okay, key four, because it's always on top, select still store one, so it'll automatically assign the video and the alpha, right? I can type in 
the, chan the still ID number here just by typing in 147 because that's the number that I want to load. Or I could manually have selected it. So I could have selected on the item, found it, and hit the select button. And that also would have triggered the event to start loading the animation. Now it'll pre-cache it into the RAM cache. So once I've loaded it one time, it'll always be available to me. And there's a gigabyte of RAM cache so I can load multiple transitions or frames to perform this, this, this event. So now that we've set it, we've selected our, our animation, right, as, the, as what we want to do. We want to insert a pause. So I'll go in and I'll insert that pause and just a couple frames to make sure it performs what we wanted. Then we're going to go ahead and cut the key on air. So we would cut the key on air or better yet, we use the custom control cut key, key four on, insert, that'll cut the key on air, it'll automatically play the video, and then we're going to perform the transition ourselves. So I go ahead and again insert special, insert a pause, now I know that the pause duration on this is 15 frames, uh, clear, 15, and we insert that. So it'll insert that pause duration of 15 frames. Now we perform a cut because it's a full frame so it'll automatically cut underneath and then we're going to insert another pause of 15 frames plus a frame or two for coverage. So let's just go ahead and say 20. Insert that, right, so it does the 20 frames and now we go ahead and we tell it to turn that key off. And again, by using these insert special commands, it'll always ensure it sends the off command and it's not the same thing as pressing it and getting a toggle. So that's how we do the exact same steps as we did for the animated transition using an external video server, using our internal still store. And again, with the memory system, it makes it very easy for you to recall that with memory effects or recall it with your uh, keypad as well.